Everything is dark in this room. <laughs> you need more lights. Dude, this is my brother's old ass room, and he decided to paint the walls navy blue. Why? Because he just got out of the military. And he couldn't get enough of the Navy. Well, he was army, but it was funny because like I painted back when I was in my very first room, right. I painted my room turquoise. And he painted his Navy. <laughs> what is with the weird colors? My rooms have either been like off white or gray. Well, that's gray. because you're you're just a boring bitch. No, they go with everything. It's easy to match furniture then. No. Yes. That's boring. So, um, guess what I did today? What? I launched my very own card store. What? Like, I I sell uh, my Digimon cards that I don't want anymore. And I got two orders so far. Yo, that's huge. Yep. Got How old orders. is it? How old is what? Your card store. Um, less than 12 hours. That's fucking huge. Let's go, dude. That's huge. Isn't that what Snorlax does? Uh, no, he usually buys. My uh, my other friend, uh, Satch, he started doing it a couple weeks ago, and he's made a couple hundred dollars doing it, so... Nice. I was like, you know what? I got all these cards laying around. I can flip things for money. I mean, shit, might as well, dude. Right? One of the orders was Satch, but he's like, I needed these things for my collection. Might as well buy them from you. I'm like, all right. Can't hate it. But. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Shift W podcast. I know we have been absent for a week. That is because I have been moving. Yeah, unexpectedly, but moving. Yes, very unexpectedly, but my name is John, a.k.a. the fucking idiot. Yes. That's Ron, a.k.a. the other fucking idiot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and we're here to talk about shit. We're here to talk about nonsense. I also just realized that um, I have, like, maybe an hour or two to complete my German lesson for the day. Otherwise, I lose my streak. Are you doing Duolingo? I am, and I'm learning German. That that bird is fucking homicidal. It is. <laughs> it really is. Every so often, I get the uh, the TikToks where it's like just standing in the corner of a room. And it's like, did you do your lesson today? And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> oh, my God. That bird is fucking homicidal and you can't it, argue otherwise. It's amazing. I love that bird. But I moved. I am fully moved in. Good. How's it feel? Not good because I had to go back to a corner bed. What's wrong with a corner bed? You don't. So you don't progress as an adult until you move your bed out of the corner. I mean... Just move your bed off the corner. It doesn't say how far off the corner it needs to be. But the thing is, my bed literally takes up a fucking quarter of the room. I can't move it out of the corner. <laughs> all, all you do is sleep in there. What's it matter? Yeah, but if I move it out of the corner, I can't fit my fucking desk. Like, I can only scoot back this far, as is. <laughs> and I hit the bed. This is the bed. <laughs> so what what you're telling me is you need to get rid of your chair just put your desk next to your bed and game from your bed <laughs> just That's sit on the bed and game me. like 
as as a square of a room, it literally needs to be desk, bed, empty space. Yes. So there you go. That's, or bed that's how it needs to be. Bedroom gaming, literally. I, I started on the couch. You have progressed to the bed. We are bed gaming now. There you go. That is the next meta. But yeah, I, I really do need to get a smaller desk. I actually found on Ikea. There is a new desktop that okay. they released, but not the uh, Linmon or whatever it is. No, so they have the Linmon and then I have a different one, which is the it's like a 51 by 30 or 31 okay. something like that. So it's a very deep desk, mm -hmm. but they have a new one that they just launched not too long ago. I mean, within the past year since I've checked, right? It's a 54 by 23. 54 so it's four by 23, only 23 yeah, so deep. It, yeah. Okay. So I'm looking at getting that just because like mine's Granted, 51 by 30 is great. I mean, I have my main monitor on this bendy arm, which I could pull in and out and all that. I don't even know like what the but, size of this one is. But like my desk has so much empty room. My desk does not like at all. Like it, it's literally like, here's one monitor. I'm touching it. Here's my camera. Here's another monitor. Here's another monitor. Go XLR, keyboard, stream deck. Like all yeah, of see, all of my desk real estate is taken up. Like I have I have probably about uh four by six on one this side, this side of my desk, just for you know bullshit. And then between my Go XLR, my speakers and my light, I have probably about two inches, three inches. Between my Go XLR and the back of the desk, I probably have eight inches. And between my mouse pad and my computer that I have on my desk, I have about half an inch. See, and then there's another two inches on the other side of that. If I was able to mount my monitors and get them off of the desk, that would open up so much more room. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. I can't. <laughs> so I'm I'm. Probably actually looking into that because since I have an actual wall now, right? Uh, old space that it was manufactured home. It's basically just cardboard and then yeah, cardboard on the other side. Yeah, but this so, one, I'm I'm actually thinking about getting a wall mount because see, that's how I had my old TV. My behind my monitors is a wall, but the wall has a shelf on it. So, like, you see yeah. how this, like, there's this shelf here, and then there's yeah. wall, and then there's wall behind all the pops. That extends like that all around back here. Because that's the, um, that's the ground line of the house. Yeah. So, it just makes that shelf, for whatever reason, the way they designed the house. But is above that ground line just, like, standard house you yeah know, it, it's house. boards it, and all that drywall and studs and like that, that why is don't the you just side wall of the house why don't you just drill into that drywall oh yeah i mean definitely but um what i was gonna say is i got that shelf it's not a super deep shelf but like if you you get something and you kind of mount it and you extend the shelf and then I can yeah. just put the stuff on the shelf, like do a double layered thing. Like I have desk and then above desk, wall mounted desk. I would. So with your situation, I mean, that shelf is how deep, like three, four inches. Yeah, I mean, like it holds a pop figure and then yeah. like this. Okay, so about four or five inches. Yeah. So with that, I would honestly see if you can just get at least like one wall mount mm -hmm. for. Uh, you said you have a TV, right? 
as your main monitor? No, it's actually just a 32 inch monitor. It's so I would see I would see if if that's comfortable for you, I would see if you can get a wall mount for that. Um, if not, I would see if you can get wall mounts for your secondaries. Right. Um, so why don't you have your computer on the floor? Uh, well, I realized very shortly after I started putting everything together, um, I need six to eight foot HDMI cables. Oh. <laughs> because... So, you know, I have a uh, a three monitor or three monitor, yeah, like mount like arm thing, yeah, yeah. So, like my central mount is right here. My main monitor is on one of the arm mounts, right? And I staggered the entire thing like over all the way to the end. So this monitor is central and then all the other monitors are stacked off to the side. Right. My OBS monitor, I could barely fit it with a standard, you know, four foot HDMI cable. And that was pushing it. Yeah, it was pushing. So you had to move it up onto the desk so everything would fit. No, I had to swap the cable to my HDMI to DP mm. cable, which is six foot. And that allow some slack <laughs> yeah i have um all of my monitors are going well now these two are hdmi this one is just straight uh display port um but these two have hdmi to display port converters going into yeah. the computer yeah did you get them off Amazon? <laughs> I did. I don't remember what brand they are, though. Are they like the Amazon Basics ones or whatever, I, where you can I get them for like eight dollars a pop? So. No, I don't think I went with those. Oh, <laughs> I got those, and like the port for them is like that fucking thick. No, <laughs> but no. like everything is fine. <laughs> yeah, no, no, my mine's pretty normal. Oh yeah. Like I just I just went on Amazon. I was like HDMI to DP and then bought the cheapest thing, which was like eight dollars a pop. And like each each port is like four inches thick. Yeah, no. But it's also like six foot of cable. <laughs> yeah, no, mine. It's literally like it's just an adapter. It's like that big. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah, literally... no, I have a. I have a whole ass cable where it's HDMI one side, DP on the other no, side. Oh yeah, mine is literally an HDMI cable all the way up until it gets to the computer. Then it's just this stupid little adapter. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because um, I was going in my old closet the right. other day and I found another monitor. So oh, I'm like, no. Mm. No, John, you can't. I have the power cable for it. Mm, do I do? No, you don't need it. I'm thinking about like, it's a so tractor. I have, I have about four foot of wall over on this side. Right. I'm thinking about just getting a wall mount over there and just strapping it over there and just putting my OBS way the fuck over there where I don't have to worry about it. See, uh, it's funny because you're like, oh, you have a TV. My old, like back when I was still like in my old setup, when I was streaming from the couch, my yeah. second monitor was a wall mounted 32 inch like Vizio TV. Yeah, that yeah, I, I remember you showing me that. And I was like, dude, that's so fucking dope. I, I literally like my my main TV was there and next to it there was like a little shelf that I had the the streaming PC on. I ran an HDMI cable from there up the wall through the ceiling and over to the wall mounted TV. I still have that TV <laughs> and the wall Dude. mount. So realistically, I could just mount that above this main monitor and pull it forward and do a fourth monitor. 
really like I want to. I don't need to, but I really want to because I have my main main monitor, right? And right. then I have one monitor dedicated to just OBS. Like it's the whole Only. the whole thing. Yeah. And then this monitor up here closest to my mic or close to my camera, I have for Spotify, Discord, alerts and chat mm-hmm. but there is overlap right. so i'm like mm, do i really want to do this but also the overlap would be nice because i could just offset obs off to that fourth monitor right and then just have spotify discord alerts chat yeah see the way i have it this monitor it's vertical this is just discord and yeah during stream i'll throw um like an internet browser there just to like keep an eye on everything yeah um but for the most part i'm not using discord when i'm streaming unless i'm playing with you somebody. also still have notifications on while you're streaming you fucking psychopath see like i put it in streamer mode and it just like knocks itself out every time i need to change my name for this so because when you open OBS, it's like, oh, you can't bring up your profile stuff. You're you're streaming. We don't want people to see that. And I'm like, no, oh, no it does that during your stream. I know you fucking weirdo, because I just, I'll, I'll be sitting there watching you all of a sudden. Oh, cool. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I got to I got to turn those off. Um, but yeah, so yeah. this is Discord Psychopath. and Internet during streaming. This is just like gaming and whatever I'm mainly focused on. Yeah, uh, this will be OBS, but since I use uh, OBS live, it has my chat and my notifications and stuff just built onto yeah. it. So I don't need a second uh, thing just for that. Yeah, I don't know why so, you use pop out, you crazy person. So do you did I ever show you what my OBS was at the most crowded no, I don't want to know. I had like seven different docks inside like a vertical, a vertical 1080p monitor. Right. I had seven different docks installed into that screen. Why? What did you need because to see? Because efficiency. What did efficiency. you need to see, though? I how don't can, remember. How could you be but more I think, efficient? I literally have stream chat, video like preview and then notifications. That's it. Yeah, see, that's... I don't know what I was doing. I think I showed Sushi this, and he called me a psychopath for it. But I had seven different docs inside my OBS screen, and then once I finally got, you know, streamlined and everything like that, like, that's when I started doing the pop-outs. And, like, pop-outs, honestly, are a lifesaver unless you switch your monitors. If you switch your monitors, they automatically go all the way up to the top of the screen to where you can't move it. And then you have to reset everything and then you have to redo it. But besides that, they're fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I literally don't need anything else than just chat, a preview, notifications. Then obviously I have my scenes and sources. Yeah, but... for me now I have mine whittled all the way down to just dashboard preview and then the normal obs shit yeah um so i forget who it was and i'm interested to try it out but at the same time i don't want to rebuild everything but apparently i forget what it was called like twitch's streaming program is supposed to be pretty good. Like they have their own OBS type program that you can use and it literally just pulls up like the entirety of Twitch in the program and it it's it's pretty that, crazy. That sounds an awful lot like Streamlabs but, but like purple. If, if no, but if you're streaming on Twitch, it's all 
integrated already. And like it comes mm. with alerts and all that kind of stuff built on. I don't it. know why they need to do that, though, because OBS already has that covered. Yes, but if you have new people starting to stream and you're like, hey, look how simple this is. You yeah. can just download this and go. I mean, that is true. I mean, that's the only reason why I started off on slobs was because like you literally download it, put in a couple scenes and then you're good to go. Yeah. But I really. Like I might I might look <laughs> into it just to see like what it's about yeah. and like see if I could just recreate like the one like my starting scene uh, my main scene and my ending scene. Um, yeah. And just like next time I stream, use that and see how it goes. Because from what the person was telling me, it shows like um, everything that you would need to see on like Twitch's side as far as like your bit rate and all that stuff. It's literally like having your dashboard from Twitch when you're streaming slammed into obs yeah almost almost similar to slobs but like you know instead of stream labs it's twitch yeah like i would i would be interested if if you do do that mm -hmm. uh i would see like what the cpu usage is or the gp gpu usage is right compared between the both because, I mean, I don't know, you probably already know this, but between slobs and OBS, there oh, is a 10% difference. Huge difference. Huge. Huge difference. It's huge. And I would, I would be more interested to see that over, like, like the, the kind integrations of and all that. that. putting a, on, uh, on your computer itself. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, I think back when we first met, I was using slobs, and that was while I was streaming and recording off the same fucking computer right and between slobs and obs like i couldn't stream and record but as soon as i switched over to obs i was able to stream and record at the same quality and i was like what the fuck was i doing yeah and i mean like but, i have my streaming pc i haven't turned it on in months because everything that I'm streaming at the moment is so, like, low capacity stuff. It's just yeah. all fine on my main computer. I, that... <sighs> let like, me let, humble you. Like, like, when I stream Apex, and, like, I need it, like, crazy, like, looking good so I can play the game and the stream quality looks good, then, yeah, I turn on the stream PC and stuff like that. But like I'm playing Final Fantasy one. The game is three hundred and six megabytes. What, what the do thing I, is what like do I this is this is what I've been trying to tell Sushi for so fucking long before you spent fifteen hundred fucking dollars on a computer. If you overbuild one computer, you don't need a second. Right. You really don't. The, the only reason I started using a streaming PC is literally because I had it. Yeah, exactly. That's the only viable reason you would have a second PC. It's not like it's, I went out and built it. The only thing is I threw a hard drive in it, but it is my old streaming PC before I built this one that I just yeah. had. Yeah, at most you invested what 100 bucks yeah for for a hard drive and this is why like i don't i don't understand why people roast like me or any other single pc streamer right like the reason why i overbuild my rig is because i can handle streaming gaming at 1440 144 at the same time and you're fine. while recording. Yeah. And you're fine. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, why do you need a Ryzen 9 to upgrade? And I'm like, because I have a Ryzen 7 right now. And if I want to overbuild my computer, this is the only logical upgrade. Yeah. 
Not to yeah, mention no, the fact that I I video edit on this fucking thing. I do Photoshop. I do all sorts of shit on this one computer. Yeah. I don't need to turn off another computer to do this and then turn it off, turn it on the other one to do this. And yeah. No, I just turn on the one. It's good to go. Yeah, literally, like I said, the only reason I'm using that one yeah. uh, for streaming is because I had it. And it's like, oh, hey, you know, like, instead of bumping Apex down to 1080p, I can keep it up at 1440. And yeah. that's and fine. I hate but that like, I'm so abrasive about it, but like, I literally argued the fact with that motherfucker for like two months. But yeah, dude, I was. <laughs> There's so many things on like a dual PC rig that for whatever reason just don't work properly. Like, yeah, my my Jerry uh, PNG tuber that I use on my streams is controlled by just that lip that program that reads the audio input uh, yeah. from the microphone that you assign to it. When you use a second computer, you need to send all of the audio from your main computer to the secondary computer. So there's yeah. no way to isolate your vocals. You may have to reinstall it on your gaming PC, to be no, honest. No, no. It, it is on my gaming PC, but I'm saying like, yeah, if I want to stream from the streaming PC, there's no way in that program oh, to select yeah. just the vocal track. So it responds yeah. to every single uh, noise that comes through. So it just right. doesn't make sense. So if you see me streaming with just like a static little Jerry, like sitting down, just hanging out, chances are I'm using my streaming PC because I can't use the the little interactive model properly if I'm on my streaming yeah. PC. I I really honestly think the only viable reason to have a second PC is say your gaming PC crashes, right? And you're still live. Like you could just oh, just chatting section like yeah. we're still live i have to restart my pc you know yada 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 yeah i think that's the only viable reason to be honest yeah and and i mean like if you're going and you're streaming and you're outputting like freaking 20 what is it 2160 uh above 1440 well that's that's only on youtube side right yeah because that's what lupo does if, if you're outputting like that and you're recording and you're encoding and all of that stuff then sure i can understand like splitting the load between them yeah but like you said even like when i'll play satisfactory from time to time i got that in i think 1440 and it runs sufficient enough because it's an early access game yeah like anytime you see like little staggers or anything in the game that's happening to me too it's not from the yeah. stream it's just the game like when it goes to auto save it like buffers for a quick second yeah and so. see that's that's what happens with me with fallout 4 like today i was playing and i finally got into the city Right. And that shit was chugging at like 40 FPS. Yeah. And I saw it on my screen like it was chugging. And I was like, it's happening to me too. Like yeah. it's chugging. Yeah, like <laughs> it's, it, just, it's, not it's just, just what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have like 807 mods installed, right? Uh, I so that mod you showed me. Oh, the realistic. I, uh, uh... Yes. So I actually had to uninstall that because it didn't work, uh, but I rebuilt it. <laughs> I thought it killed your game. <laughs> oh, no, it did. It absolutely did. But I rebuilt it. OK, because most of most of whatever you showed me was just like character model, you know, flare right. little shit. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. I want nukes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want I want a wasteland. 
Yeah, and I was sitting here playing today, and I had a whole bunch of people like they were like a, uh, well, not a whole bunch because you know retired streamer. Yeah, but they were all but like, I would have so, been in there, but I was in the city, so I was like, I can't be walking around just watching John stream. Oh yeah, no, like I had I had a good couple people. They were like, so what's this weather mod? do and i found i just was like all right fallout click enable and all of a sudden just <laughs> and i was like nuclear that's what it rain. does motherfucker <laughs> nuclear rain yeah yes speaking speaking of nuclear and keeping it on on that uh i've gotten to the point in satisfactory me and my friend we got to nuclear power um they really don't like you when you get to nuclear power. So basically Who doesn't like you when you get to the the game itself doesn't like you when you get there because the way they developed it it makes sense in like a real world application. You take uranium, you you refine it, you make it into rods and then you throw those rods in a nuclear reactor and then there's nuclear waste. Yeah. In every other application of the game, you can take a waste byproduct and throw it into what's called the awesome sink. And it takes that and it gives you like these coupons to buy stuff. It's great. It's wonderful. You can't do that with nuclear waste. Nuclear waste, you just need to store somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. Until you get to another point in which case you can repurpose the nuclear waste with a couple other steps and turn it into uh, plutonium rods. And then you can burn the plutonium rods, which burn more efficiently than the uranium rods. Um, yeah. So that's great until you realize that produces plutonium waste and that shit can't be used for anything. Um... So you're literally uh -huh. just left with this radioactive byproduct that you need to just get rid of forever. Um, so what I did, I just created a stupid long conveyor belt coming out of our uh, plutonium reactor that just goes and goes to like, yeah. like an eight chest storage system. That's just going to forever capture this uh, waste. But yeah. <laughs> the radiation compounds, like as time goes on, so like if it's in the box and it's like only one or two of the barrels, it's like the radiation ticker is like that big. And you're like, all right, cool. Yeah. But as more and more gets stored, the AOE field of the radiation just expands. So, like, there's going to be some so, point where, like, two miles away from that thing, you're just going to start radiation ticking, and you're going to be like, well, I know what's that way. <laughs> so you can't, like, dig underground or anything like that for it? Not yet in the game, at least. Because I know, like, standard, well, standard real-life application, mm -hmm. like, they, you know, dig underground for maybe half a mile or whatever and store it in, you know, a high concrete yeah, fucking no. three-foot three foot concrete safe, sort of. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, you, you just... You run it somewhere, you're never going to go on the map, and it just accumulates. Oh my god. And it got to the point, uh, when we, before we repurposed the uranium waste, uh, we just had, like, one chest that was almost completely full. Um, and when I say almost completely full, it is a... 16 slot chest and each stack can hold 500 waste so Good Lord. it was 400 stacks of 500 
Good fucking... I mean, it was 14 <laughs> stacks of 500. And, like, you went next to it. You, uh, you need to have these special, like, iodized filters in order to, like, put them in your hazmat suit and be alive with the radiation. Yeah. Um, it, it would get to the point, like, where if you were standing directly next to it, your filter would just drain, like, constantly. Like, not just, like, slow <laughs> kicks. It would just go. So oh, I had to build... God. I had to build a whole separate set of uh, storage things and then run the conveyor belts from far away just so it would start moving and I didn't die. Oh, my God. The game is amazing. If you, like... I can't even like like you can compare it a little bit to Minecraft and like the building sense of it, but there's yeah. so much more like detail to it because yeah. there's like like the the part that I'm on for the nuclear uh, for the plutonium reactor, you need 600 meters of water cubed a minute to cool the thing. Oh, and sort of like a natural power yeah. plant. Exactly. Yeah. So it's it's smart enough in the fact where it's like, hey, you know, like actual stuff like to create sulfuric yeah. acid, you need sulfur and water in like this yeah. blender thing. And then you can make batteries and shit. But yeah, I'm like looking around and like you can get water extractors, which you just put them on water and they pull water out in a tubing. I found basically a geyser. Um and you put a like a pressurizer on it and then there's like all these nodes and you can pull a whole bunch of water out and it's like really really good but stupid detailed like yeah like if you want to sink time into something that you could literally just sit there for hours and play because it's all about being as efficient as possible yeah yeah, and I mean, I know you like efficiency, so min max, baby. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and like from the first time I played it to like when I just picked it up again, there was like two more updates. They added your favorite thing. Um, they added overclocking to to machines. So like a standard miner can only pull out like sixty iron from a node. But if you no, put, bitch, it's pulling out 128. Fuck you. Yeah, no, like if you put <laughs> like the overclock batteries in, um, it goes up by 50 percent for each battery you put in and it takes a max yeah. of three batteries. So you could overclock the thing to like 200 percent or 250 percent and it's pulling out now 180. Yeah, because like this needs to pull out 160 because the next thing in line uses 160 a minute, but then you need to slow it down because the next thing in line only takes this amount and it's a whole lot of balancing and yeah. Yeah. It's good. I love that. Game I so am. Much. I am excited for the next month, to be honest. Why? What are we getting? So I don't know if you were there, but for the longest time I've been talking about doing October as a horror horror game month. We getting spooky Jones? I believe we are. What are we getting? I we believe getting, we are. We getting Outlast. We getting Poppy Not Outlast. Playtime. Um so I do have the Alice demo downloaded which Alice is basically like a 16-bit first-person shooter or first-person perspective horror game, okay. which is a derivative of like Alice Fatal Wonderland. Frame. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, and I'm kind of terrified because I never... I played Fatal Frame once, and that was for a whole last five minutes. Bro, just... <laughs> When is I don't think Callisto Protocol and Dead Space Remake are coming out until next year. Oh god. I'm 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 probably gonna download Dead Space 1, 2, and 3. Uh I have Resident two, Evil. 
fantastic horror games. I am absolutely terrified of Dead Space 1. I never finished it. I, I feel like we've talked about this before. Um, I finished that game at like 2 in the morning with the lights off. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we did talk about this because my friend had it and he wouldn't let me play unless the lights were off. <laughs> I remember you saying that. <laughs> um, and I was we were uh, we were at his grandparents house and he his grandparents had this big ass fucking 80 inch plasma screen back when plasma screens were, you know, four feet thick. What's even the point? That's like and, that's uh, a dead month. The, the Dead Space remake is supposed to be coming out at the end of January of next year. Oh, of course. You release games in January that you don't think are going to do good. No, like with Dead Space, you release them in September. Yeah. But like, yeah, Dead Space 1. I was playing on this big ass 80 inch plasma screen TV on a four foot stool sitting three feet away from it. <laughs> And I got to this one point where you had that that big ass fucking rotating thing uh -huh. where you had to get around it. And I got to the very end. All of a sudden it fucking smacked me and I fell out of that stool. Um, like I fell backwards and I took the stool with me and I was sitting there falling four feet. <laughs> so uh, Callisto Protocol is supposed I'm so to be ready. December 2nd of this year. Oh God! Please, I can't wait. I'm 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 so fucking ready. I I'm so excited to see what those guys have done with like the new engines and everything like that. Not only that, but it's like Dead Space Three compared to Dead Space One teams. Yeah, it was maybe half. Yeah, like maybe like, half of the Dead Space 1 team was still on for Dead Space 3. Like I said, Dead Space 1 and 2 were great horror games. Dead Space 3 was a great action game. Yeah. And it was it was in no way a bad game. I enjoyed Dead Space 3, but it was not a horror game. It wasn't Dead Space. It was an action game with horror elements. Yeah. It was it was basically like Lost Planet with the Dead Space name. Yeah, but because the Callista same thing Protocol, happened to Lost Planet. Callista Protocol is going to be so good. Yeah, especially since all I think the uh, lead developer that started it has brought all the people back from Dead Space one. Yep, it's pretty much all the original people. The, the I'm thing, so I'm so ready. The thing I'm most confused about is that they said it takes place in the dead, uh, not the Dead Space universe, it, the the PUBG, the PUBG universe. Universe, yeah. I'm yes. just like, mm, what? Does I, PUBG have a story? I'm I'm confused about that too, but like honestly. With the way that the game is progressing, that is literally the last thing on my mind. Yeah, no, like, like, I don't it doesn't affect my judgment of the game at all. I'm just confused as to what that means. And I'm going to yeah. throw a complete 180 in this conversation, but not really because I'm still confused. We're going to talk about Ninja for a second. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I wanted how to bring is, this up earlier. How is he streaming on everything? Like, because he fucking can. Yeah, but like, is he not in some kind of agreement with Twitch? Is he not a Twitch no. partner? OK, OK, OK. Pause. Pause. Let me talk. Mm -hmm. Don't say anything. So, you know, Ninja rage quit out of Fortnite and stopped his stream and all that and all that, yeah. you know, so on and so forth. As soon as he announced that, or it was as soon as he put the uh, user not found timeout thing on his Twitter or whatever, Twitch stripped his partnership, stripped his affiliate. So... He's still on the platform. So he's, he's just, just not even nothing. an affiliate. He's just not an affiliate. He's not a partner. He's nothing. 
He's so he's just straight dono living. Yes. And that is as soon as that happened, that is when he announced he is streaming literally everywhere. Yeah. I think the only platforms he's not streaming on are Instagram and TikTok. No. He I saw him streaming on TikTok today. Oh. Well, yeah, it's it's like two two platforms he's not streaming on, but he's streaming on literally every single platform. He's, and I think I, I saw the little like ad that he had put out. It was it literally said um, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Um, I think it was those five. So that would leave yeah. Trovo out and something else and he was also streaming on twitter too yeah he, he's like, literally just streaming everywhere yeah and i was i was uh i was that, watching something earlier today that chat's like, gotta be nuts the thing is like with ninja you don't even fucking look at chat yeah like he doesn't even have to respond to anything like he doesn't have to respond to donos. He doesn't have to respond to subs yeah. like the man is 30 million plus. And now that's like, spread just across, pretty. that's spread across literally every platform. So he's got yeah. however many Twitch followers he had. Now he's got however many YouTube subscribers, however many Twitter followers, TikTok followers. Yeah. He's literally getting everything and and the thing is like granted i was watching a uh, harris heller on this earlier like the multi-streaming in terms of smaller creators like me you you know us like sub yeah 200 subs or whatever like that's not good you don't want to do that right but as where like say Nick Merckx, Ninja, Courage JD, like fucking Phase Banks or whoever, yeah, it, whoever those like thousand, not even thousand, like five thousand plus subs are, you can do that. Yeah, and it not affect you. Like you could, you could straight up just stop streaming just on Twitch and do. YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all that, yeah. and you'll be fine. If anything, it'll only help you. But us, like, sub 100, 250 subs, we don't want to do that. Right. I mean, like, I don't see why it would hurt you in terms of growth, because, like, you're still just getting yourself out on more places but like i could understand like if you're trying to financially grow yourself then yes you want to focus on one platform well the thing is like with us small time guys you want to focus on community because if you have a community you can build a gang and if you have a gang you can have a team and if you have a team you can have an actual like cult yeah so to say so like with nick Merckx and the m fam you know i mean they are literally fucking everywhere you could see randoms with the tag m fam yeah on warzone on siege on whatever have you yeah he didn't get to that point by streaming over multiple platforms right he got to that point by streaming on twitch yeah well, also when he started, Twitch was a different place. Yeah, but the thing is, it like, was easy he to grow on Twitch then. Yeah, but the thing is, like, you don't want to try to expand too far, too thin. Right. Yeah. Rather than just focus on one, make it thick, and then slowly spread out. Yeah, but see, like, that's that's such like a weird contrast because. You you see literally everybody that it's like, oh, um, you need to be streaming on Twitch, putting uh, YouTube videos out, posting TikToks, doing Instagram reels, all that stuff. Yeah. But then at the other hand, they're like, yeah, don't stream to all these places at the same time. Yeah. Well, the thing so is, like, you is 
you stream to one platform and then you just you're, take you're funneling whatever you... people from the other places there. Yes. But do you realize like how difficult it is to get somebody to go from your YouTube to your Twitch? Brother. Yes. So <laughs> if if you're Jeez. trying to show them like, hey, look, these are snippets of my stream. You should come check it out. And they're like, oh, that's cool. I'll follow these snippets. But meanwhile, you're just like, nah, fuck the snippets. I'm here. I'm there. I'm at your mom's house. We're doing it everywhere. You it, just get all the people. So they're telling you they're telling you, hey, put your content everywhere but don't put your content everywhere. And then they're also saying stream, you know, five days a week, six days a week, seven days a week or so on and so forth. And then also put that content out there. Yeah. But the thing is like, granted, I've suffered that myself trying to do that. And then also spending another two hours after the fact, trying to cut things up and make it nice and then put it on YouTube, put it on you know fucking twitter put it on yeah. wherever else i'm sitting there at the end of the day you're, even if i didn't have a eight hour job you're doing more work in that time than you were doing yeah in a normal job i'm i'm sitting there working 16 18 hours a day yeah if i had an eight hour job i stream for four hours that's 12 hours yeah. If I do all the things that they recommend, that takes another two hours. So that's 14 hours. Yeah. Then I have to wind down, go to sleep, wake up, do, do it, it all, all over, over again. again. 14 hours out of 24 hours a day. See, that is like, fucking insane. Here's, here's the thing. Everybody who's made it is now trying to be like, oh, this is how you can make it. You just need to do everything that like I do. Meanwhile, they're there. They sit down. They press go live. They do what they got to do for however many hours they stream in that day. Five, ten hours, whatever it is. Yeah. And then they stop. And then all of that content they created goes to their editors and their editors yeah. go nuts with it. Yeah. And that's that's that's. That's the biggest thing about us, you know, small time creators like, sure, we could hire a Fiverr editor or whatever yeah. have you for like 10 bucks per video. But, but 10 how, bucks per video, how long until over you five see days, revert, uh, how long until you see a return on that investment? Exactly. And you could be sitting there spending, you know, 10 bucks per video, five days a week, 50 bucks a week. Yeah. Turns into 100 bucks per two weeks. Yeah. 150, 200. And you yeah. might never ever see that investment until maybe three, four, five, six months in. If you get lucky and, and pop and off. By the, yeah. And that's if you have a cohesive unit with the Fiverr editor yeah. that you hired for, you know, 15 bucks per video. Yeah. And even then, like I had I had one video edited by a Fiverr Fiverr person. They got it about 65% what I wanted. Yeah. And that was 15 bucks. Yeah. I'm sitting here, I'm like, all right, so I got this video, it's about 65% right. I have one more revision in this in this fifteen dollar contract. I have yeah. one revision. If they don't get it right, then it's either this or that. And if you don't like either one, I mean, you're shit out of luck. You yeah. just have to spend another 15 fucking dollars for a different Fiverr editor yeah. and hope for the best. See, so it's everybody who's like, oh, yeah, look at all these people. They made it. And then all these other people are like, oh, yeah, this is the advice that I can give you on what to do. Like you said, Harris Hell is like, don't stream on all these places. Just put your content on all these places. Well, streaming is yeah. putting your content on that platform. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter I, what kind I, I of... Honest... I understand, like, the you want to create a group of people. 
What does it matter if that group of people is on five different websites? You're still all there enjoying the content. I feel like I feel like the best case scenario for us, like small times, would have an editor reach out to you or you reach out to an editor. Yeah. And say, hey, I can't pay you right now. But if you make content for this channel, I will split, you know, 70, 30 your way. Yeah. I feel like that's honestly the best scenario. Like you're, you're giving maybe that 50, man 50, stock 50, 60, 40. You're giving that yeah. man stock options. And I mean, it's a gamble. It's a yeah. gamble. You got to find it's a gamble the right on person. Both sides. Yeah, it's a gamble. You got to find the right person that's willing to take it. But yeah. it, I mean, it could pop off and then see if you're if you're if you're genuinely like interesting enough to create content with and the person's let and you go to the person, you're like, hey, I'm gonna split this 70 30 all the revenue that comes in from my TikTok stuff that you edit. Yeah, there there's two ways that's going to go. One, they're going to tell you to fuck off Two, they're going to say, OK, and you're going to get the best editing out of them that they can do because yeah. they're going to want that to pop off. And then they exactly. Get paid. Yeah. And I'm saying, like, even if it, even if you reach out to an editor, be like, hey, you know, for my YouTube, I want I want you as an editor. I like your editing. I can't pay you, but say we split it 50 50. Yeah. And not only that, but like, granted, you're taking gamble on them. They're taking gamble on you. Yeah. But not only that, they have an aspiration to just make that fucking viral. Yeah. They just want that to go viral. Hold on. Hey, people, if you have the money to pay your editors, <laughs> pay yes, your artists. Absolutely. Don't skimp on them. They deserve to be Ab paid for their time. Absolutely. And the, we're, the, we're just talking so, about a very, very unlikely scenario that could possibly happen. Well, the, the thing is, this is actually coming from from a very true scenario because uh, Jay Schlatt. Right. I don't you know, Jay Schlatt. Yeah. Um, He paid. One of his or it was a clip channel that was taking his clips and posting it on their YouTube to get all the revenue. He bought them out. Right. Say, you know, 60, 40 or whatever. Like he's. He's giving them the authorization to use their clips he so they're not getting striked and all that. Yeah. And then not only did he do that for one channel, he did that for five. So he's allowing them to use his clips, That's but he's also getting income. a percentage. That's just yeah. passive income. He's doing and, none of the work and just getting, yeah, getting the money. And not only that, but I think like in one of the channels, he's getting a 30 70 split. Right. So like granted, he's on the losing end of that split, but he's also letting them yeah. be strike free, you know, let yeah. them use his content he's, and all that. He's on the losing end of that split, but that's still 30 percent of the revenue that he wasn't getting before. Exactly. Instead of him getting zero one hundred from them just taking clips off his channel. Yeah, he's actually like enlisted them into, you know, his his group. Yeah. And like, I feel like the best outcome for us small creators or anything like that is just letting letting the editors. If you edit a YouTube video for me, say I get a 30 70 split. Yeah. Or 40 60 or something like that, like let the editor take most of the split. Yeah. Just starting off. And then once if it goes viral, if we start making numbers, you know, start re renegotiating. Yeah. Like. I feel like that's the best outcome for us small creators is like take a chance on a creator. Take a chance on an editor. Just negotiate. Hey, you know, I'll do a 1090. Yeah. If you make this video for me. 
but like just really it's 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 all a gamble it's really all it's all a gamble all of it's a gamble always but that's all i have to say about it yeah and i mean i i feel like that's a pretty good stopping point we we had a very yeah. very dense episode i'd say (laughs) where i'm not making you absolutely infuriated yeah no i mean it it was a good one it was a good one honestly like without obviously getting into too much information the situation you found yourself in sucked but you definitely seem a lot less stressed i am and that is also because i have been on a five-day clean streak there you go so I am a weekend warrior instead of a daily driver mm-hmm. in terms of alcohol. There you go. <laughs> Good on you. But yeah, it's it's. I did it for myself as as much as Mrs. Cotton didn't want to. Right. Um, by the way, me and Mrs. Cotton actually officially split. Yeah, well, so, I didn't want to say anything, but it it was it was mutual. I mean, right. we just weren't happy. So I it, I wanted to do this for myself. And, it ran its course. And that was that. Sometimes you just got to be the bigger person and be like, listen, it ain't it ain't working out. Well, the thing is, like, I just we weren't happy mm-hmm. and I wanted to better myself. So I was just like, you know what? I'm going to step away. We're going to distance ourselves i'm gonna get better that's that if yeah if things work out things work out if things don't i'm still a better person because of it and you're she's still a better person because of it she's doing things herself too that's good that's good yeah all right want to take us out i guess Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you guys listening to this podcast. If you're watching, appreciate you watching. If you haven't joined the Discord yet, please do. Please drop us some topics. Please ask us questions. If you want to, maybe we might live stream this one, especially since I have better internet now. Yeah, not a single chip in any connection. <laughs> uh, but please follow us on all socials. Uh, Shift W on TikTok, YouTube, I Spotify. Might around, I might get around to posting a TikTok. Who knows? Yeah, you haven't done that in a while. Bro, life. It, it, <laughs> we, we literally started this at like the beginning of the summer and then my job was just like... <laughs> I know. Work. <laughs> But we appreciate you guys, all the subscribers on YouTube. I love you. I don't know about V, but I love you. I'll lick your butthole if you want. Too far. I'm very fond of all of you. Not too far. Uh, Everybody on Spotify, we appreciate you guys, especially since we just passed that anchor sponsorship. I love you guys. Peace out. Peace out.